Two children disappeared. There were literally hundreds of people looking for the children. Two months later, their bodies were discovered. They were non-recognizable. They had been skeletized, mummified. Was their stepfather responsible for this horrific crime? Every step of the way, the evidence led back to Kevin. He had violence in his background. But every story usually has two sides. They fixed their focus, put their blinders on, and built a case to convict Kevin Neal. Someone else was responsible for the disappearance and murders. Would forensic science solve the case? The seeds would only have grown at the creek. If a person had been dead two months and they hadn't been smelled before, I would be surprised. Specialist analysis was fundamental. The insect life cycles can be very important in pinpointing times of death. That's a guess. It's not science. But what would the jury decide? Urbana is a small farming community in Champaign County, Ohio. Champaign County is a small uh, rural county, small population, about 40,000 or under, uh, mostly farming, rural. It's um, a good community, uh, good people, people know each other. On a July afternoon in 1997, local resident Kevin Neal made a desperate call to the emergency services. Kevin Neal's two stepchildren, 11-year-old India and 4-year-old Cody, had disappeared from their farmhouse. Champaign County Sheriff David Deskins responded to the call. We'd receive reports of a child missing, and uh, typically it'd be a situation where a child was, was hiding or maybe went to the neighbor or a miscommunication. Almost in all cases, it was resolved before a nightfall. Hoping that would apply in this case, Deskins arrived at the Neal's home. What I first observed was Kevin Neal sitting on the porch uh, with his head down between his and his hands, sort of bowed over, walked up to him, uh, asked him what was going on. Kevin had told us the children had been playing outside, we went out to check on them, they were missing. He said he yelled for them, it indicated to us he'd been doing that for about an hour. With two children missing, Sheriff Deskins immediately organized a thorough search of the surrounding area. I delegated other deputies to coordinate the searches, starting with the residents and then beyond. We did call the highway patrol for helicopters and then uh, called for the Canaan. We wanted to find them while it was still daylight. Despite the intense effort, there was no sign of missing India or Cody. The next day, we continued the search again. Fearing the children may have been kidnapped, FBI Special Agent Harry Trombitis was called in to assist the investigation. I've worked a number of kidnapping cases over the years. The, the more time that goes by, the less likely it is that you're going to get them back uh, alive. So you're under a great deal of stress. As the pressure mounted, investigators considered the potential scenarios. We looked at the possibilities. Either the kids wandered away and maybe got lost. Number two, they went with somebody that they, they knew. Number three, they were abducted. Or number four, uh, something other than that may have happened. In any missing children's case, investigators start by looking at the family itself. The sooner that we can eliminate the parents as being suspects in the disappearance of their children, the sooner we can devote 100% of our resources to finding the person out there. They were confident the children's mother and biological fathers were not suspects. We were able to determine fairly quickly that neither of the, the natural fathers was involved and uh, we were confident that Sue was not involved in the abduction. But they were less certain about ruling out the children's stepfather, Kevin Neal. 
Well, he had a criminal history, and matter of fact, he was out on bond, I guess, from an alleged rape that had occurred uh, in Indiana. He had violence in his background. When Neal's police statements were scrutinized, significant discrepancies were discovered. Kevin had indicated that he had gone out and searched for the kids around the property, and he had yelled for the kids, you know. We walked all over the neighborhood and that we asked, did you see Kevin that morning? We didn't have a single neighbor uh, indicate that they heard um, Kevin yelling or, or saw Kevin looking for the kids that morning. Circumstantial evidence didn't support Neil's version of the events. Kevin had indicated that the kids were out in the yard playing and typically they have balls or different kinds of toys and there were no toys, nothing to indicate that the kids had been out there playing. Investigators then learned that Kevin and Sue were having marital difficulties. He and, and Sue had problems over the kids. They had problems financially. They had problems of trust. They, they had been arguing over um, affairs that they were accusing each other of having. So there was a lot of stress. We certainly considered the idea that children were being used as leverage. All this information sort of came together at the same time and indicated to us that uh, we really needed to focus our attention on Kevin. When the family home was searched, there were no apparent clues. We looked for any violence uh, that had occurred in the residence. We checked the walls and the floor with ultraviolet and, uh, and chemicals. There wasn't obvious signs of a, of a trauma uh, kind of situation in the residence. Two weeks after the children had been reported missing, Neil appeared in court on an unrelated charge. His bond was revoked and, and he was sentenced immediately. With time passing by, investigators were concerned that India and Cody would never be found. We had exhausted pretty much um, all the interviews that we could do. We had followed all the leads that we could. We were really at a point where we just needed another major break of some kind. We needed to find most likely the, the kids' bodies. No one really wants to admit that that's what we're looking for, but we all I think, believe that that's what we would find. Two months later, in September 1997, a local farmer made a gruesome discovery. I was mowing hay, and first trip around the field, I noticed uh, the odor of something dead. The farmer tracked the smell to land along the edge of the cemetery. And that's when I saw what I thought was a dead deer, and upon closer investigation, noticed the human skulls, so instantly I was pretty certain it was the Smith kids. Dental records confirmed the bodies were those of 11-year-old India and 4-year-old Cody. The bodies were found along a bank which had a lot of undergrowth. Uh, they were on top of the ground. There was no clothing, just a skeleton, just bones. The children's parents were devastated and the small close-knit community in shock. We needed to find the person responsible for murdering those two children. But due to the decomposition of the bodies, it was difficult to precisely determine when and how the children had died. The more decomposed, and in this case skeletonized, the 